books and contacts. If you've used other email programs before, such as Windows Live Mail, you already know that you can have several address books. You can organize them by different types of contacts, such as work, family, or friends. Outlook uses several different address books itself, but they're already created for you. They are part of the Microsoft Exchange server. As with other email programs, these address books are several separate lists of names and email addresses. If you click on the People label and go to the People module, you'll then see the Outlook contact lists. This contains all kind of personal information for your contacts. Many mistake it for the address book, but it's not. An address book is what you see when you click on the To button in a new message. There are a few different address books that you can have in Outlook. The global address list is for corporate networks and contains the email addresses of everyone in your company. This is created by your system administrator, so you don't have to search for an email address of someone within your company. The contacts address book is more like your personal address book. It is simply a list of email addresses from your contacts list. Additional address books are created if you create additional folders for Outlook contacts. These folders become separate address books. A system administrator can also create address books. Contacts are simply the names, email addresses, etc. of people you can email and the people that email you. Your contacts appear in your address books. To add new contacts to Outlook 2013, it's unbelievably easy. Simply click on the People module to open it, then click New Contact in the ribbon in the new group. A window will open up that allows you to add as much or as little information about the contact as you wish. Before you enter any information about your contact, click the full name button as shown below. This dialog box will appear. Click the downward arrow to select a title, such as Mr or Mrs. Click the first text box to type the contact's first name. Type in a middle name or initial in the middle section and their last name in the last box. If there's a suffix such as junior, click the downward arrow to select it. You can also type it in the box. Once you're finished, click on the OK button. Now you're back to the new contact form. You can enter as much or as little information as you like. You don't have to fill in every box. If there's a drop down list beside a box, you can choose an option from the drop down list or type in your own. It is not mandatory that you select an item from the drop down list as it is with other programs. As you can see on the right side of the above window, Outlook creates a contact card that looks like a business card. As you add information, it will appear on this card. Here are some tips for adding information about your contacts. You can also select how the contact is filed. If you don't want to file by someone's last name, for example, you can click in the file as box and state your filing preference. Click in the email text box and type the contact's email address. You can also add a website address if you want to link that from the address card. Also, you can enter a business phone number and home phone in the phone number section. However, you do not have to add a business or home number. You can click on the downward arrow beside the business or phone and select from 19 different ways to classify phone numbers. In the address section, you can do the same thing and choose from business, home or other. If this is the mailing address where you send mail to, make sure that this is the mailing address checkbox is checked. You can simply click in the notes section and add anything you want regarding the contact. When you're finished, click on save and close on the left side of this ribbon. Once you've entered your contacts, you will have several ways in which you can view them. The way that you view them will be determined by how you want the information arranged. These are called views. Outlook 2013 comes with 5 to 12 predefined views in each different module. Plus, you can easily alter any view. You can then name and save the altered view to use again in the future. Here's how you change the view. Click on the People label to go to the People module. Pick the view you want by clicking the Change View button in the ribbon under the View tab. You can then choose from these views. People is the default view. You will see your contacts listed by name in alphabetical order. Click on a letter in the information viewer to view the contacts that are filed under that letter. For business card, your contacts appear on virtual business cards, as you can see. Once again, you can click on the letter of the alphabet to view the contacts. The card allows you to view your contacts as small cards. And phone view displays your contacts so you can see their phone numbers. List view displays all your contacts in a list. Let's return to the default view. You can also specify how your contacts information appears in the different views. Click the view settings button in the current view group under the view tab. You can now alter the columns, how your contacts are sorted in that view, 
the fonts and lots of other options. Click OK when you're finished. To add a new view, click the Change Views button on the ribbon again. Then select Manage Views from the drop down menu. Click on the New button. Now create a name for that view and select the type of view. We're going to select icons, then leave the default setting for the folders that this view can be applied to. Click OK. Next, specify the settings just like you did when you altered the view. You can choose to sort your contacts. You can filter them on different criteria. And you can also choose other settings such as icon placements. Click OK when you're finished. Our new view is shown in the list. We want to give our new view a name so we can differentiate it from the other views we may create. So we click the rename button on the right. Let's name it icon view. Click the OK button. We can now see our view in the list with the new name that we've given it. Click OK again or click apply view to apply it. We're going to click OK. Now when we click the change views button on the ribbon, we can see our new view. If we click on it, we can apply our view to the contacts as we did the other default views. Contact options allow you to specify how names are entered into your contacts list, such as last, middle and first, or first, middle then last, as well as how they are filed. You can specify preferences to help customise Outlook to better suit your needs. To set your options for Outlook 2013, click on the File tab. Now click on Options to the left. Click People on the left side. All the options you can set are simple and self-explanatory. Set the options that you like and then click on OK. When you open up the People module, your contact folders are located on the left side of the screen in the folder pane, as shown here. As you can see, we have a group named My Contacts. The My Contacts group has one folder at the moment, which says Contacts. Now, right-click on any folder and select New Folder from the menu. Next, name the folder what the folder will contain and decide where you want to place it. We're placing it within our contacts folder. If you get this message, it means that you can't create contact folders within this type of email account. I'm using an Outlook.com account, which means that these folders are not available. Click OK. If you're using a different kind of account that supports this feature, the new folder will appear on the left. When you click on the folder, you can start adding contacts to it in the same way as we did before. A new address book is created each time you create a new contacts folder. Using the previous steps as an example, when we would have created the other folder, it became a new address book that's listed whenever we create an email and clicking on the to button. Let's say that you receive an email from someone and you want to add that person to contacts. Here's how you can do it. Return to the mail window and click on any email in the information viewer so it's displayed in the reading pane. Now hover your mouse over the sender's name or email address. Click on the downward arrow that appears. Click Add on the right hand side. Add any information that you want and then click Save. Linking contacts means that you can create a link between different contacts so the information will appear on the same card. For example, if you have a LinkedIn contact in your LinkedIn folder and also a contact created for the same person in your contacts folder, you can link these two together so all information shows on their contact card. If that's confusing, don't worry. We're going to show you how to do it. First, go to the People module and select the Contact folder. Then click a contact within that folder. In the Reading pane, click Link Contacts. You'll see this window. In the search box under Link Another Contact, select the contact you want to link it to and click OK. Contact groups are simply groups of contact folders. To create a contact group, right click on a contact group. We've clicked on My Contacts. Select the new folder group. Type in a name for the new group. You can also create and use electronic business cards in Outlook 2013. You can add this business card to your emails. 20 years ago, you might have stuck a business card in an envelope with a letter you were sending to somebody. Now you can do the same thing with email. To get started doing this, click to go to the People module. You'll now see your contacts on the screen. You can create a business card for any of your contacts by clicking on the contact to open it, then clicking on the contact tab, and then business card if it appears. 
However, for this lesson, let's create a business card for a new contact. This might be you. Click the new contact under the home tab of the people module. Enter all the information you want to appear on the business card. As you type it in, it will appear in the top right as it will look on your new card. If you want to change the background or further customize it, click on the business card in the ribbon. You can then customize the information on the card and format it too. Click OK once you've finished. Click save and close to save the contact when you're finished. To attach a business card to a message, let's start a new message. Click on the body of the message, go to the insert tab and click on the business card. You can see the list of all your business cards appear in this list. Select the business card to insert it into this message. Quick Contacts is a menu that will appear whenever you hover your cursor over the email address of a contact in the reading pane, as we did earlier in the course when we added contacts from an email. Quick Contacts looks like this. From this box, you can send a message, call a person, or even send them an email. You can even click on the drop-down box to schedule a meeting with them or add them to your contacts if you're not already.